Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, I want to say welcome. If you are a reoccurring visitor, thank you so much for coming back. For this tutorial, we're going to take a look at inter-process communication or IPC in Linux. So inter-process communication or IPC is a communication mechanism and there are several different communication mechanism or IPCs in Linux. There are share memory, file shares, pipes, which are the named pipes and the unnamed pipes. You have sockets, signals, and message queues. In a previous video, I spoke about signals. So if you haven't taken a look at that video, please do take a look at it. I would link it above. In this video, I'm going to go over pipes, which are the named pipe and the unnamed pipe. But first, I want to briefly explain the core concept of a process. So a process is a program in execution, or you can say a task that Linux machine is currently working on or any active instance of a program. A process communicate with each other. So you have like, for example, if you're doing a client and a server, you need some type of communication between both processes to work properly. So let's take a look at pipes. What are pipes? In the simplest form, pipes are a form of unidirectional communication which means it allows data to flow in one direction only. So it goes from the writer process to the reader process. And there are two types of pipes in Linux. You have anonymous pipes, which are your regular pipes. And then you have the named pipe, which also known as FIFOs. So let's say, for example, you want to see all of the users on your system or who are currently logged in on the system. Let's use the cat command for that. And we're going to use etc slash password. And that command gave us back all of the users who are currently logged in on the system. If you look at the results, it does give a lot of information. So let's narrow down our results into printing only the first column. So to narrow down our search, let us use the awk command. And to use the awk command together with the cat command, we can use the pipe symbol or the pipe command. So we can say awk and we want to print the first column only in our results. So we can print dollar sign one. Let's run the command. And now you see that the search has been narrowed down a bit for us. Let's look at this command again. So this is what we just did. We just used the pipe command to send information from the cat command to the awk command. We can also pipe it again to say sort the results. And now the results are sorted from A to Z. That symbol is called the pipe. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are very familiar with that symbol. The character, which is the pipe character, it's actually a command in Linux. The pipe command lets you send output from one command to another command. So we send output from the cat command to the awk command, and then we took the results from the awk command and put it into the sort command. What you need to know about that command is the regular pipe command cannot be accessed by the processes or the process that created it, which is the bash shell. So once the system is shut down, you do not have access to that pipe command anymore. That's when the named pipe comes in. A named pipe can last as long as the system is running or until it's deleted. It's a special type of file that follows the FIFO mechanism. So if you're doing computer programming or if you're into computer programming for a long time, you know that the FIFO mechanism means first in, first out. For a named file, you can read, write, open it, and close it just like a regular file. So I'm going to go over to the terminal and write a script to demonstrate how a named pipe works in Linux. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. So I'm going to create a file called readpipe.sh. I'm also going to create another file called writepipe.sh. 
And those are my two files. So if I do an LS, you would see my two files in here. Let's go ahead and give some permissions to the file. So we're going to use chmod755 and we want readpipe.sh and we also want writepipe.sh. So now if I do another LS, you would see both of the files are now scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and I'm going to start writing some code with a VI. So I'm going to say VI readpipe.sh. First thing I want to do inside of my script, I love to put the shebang. So I'm going to say harsh exclamation mark slash USR slash bin slash env space bash. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable called pipe and I'm going to assign that variable to the temp. So TMP slash test pipe. Then I'm going to say trap and RM slash R dash RF. And I want my pipe variable and then I'm going to put end off and I'm going to use exit. What I just did for this line, once the user exit the program, we're going to trap it and we're also going to remove the file with the RM dash F command. We're going to use couple if statements. So we're going to say if exclamation mark dash P and we want dollar sign pipe, which is our variable. And then we're going to close off with the brackets for the if statement. The if statement, the dash P means if the file exists and it is a named pipe, the not or, or the exclamation mark would flip it. So if the file does not exist, then create it. That's basically what the if line here is doing. And then we're going to say then, and to create a named file in Linux, you use the MK FIFO command and the name of the pipe. So in this case, we're going to get the name from dollar sign pipe. You can also create a pipe in Linux using MK NOD. I prefer using MK FIFO. You rarely find people using MK NOD. From there, we're going to end the if statement. Then we want to give other conditions. While all of the above is true, do statement. And we're going to say if read line and we're going to say dollar sign pipe. And we say then we're going to give one more condition. So we're going to say if dollar sign line equals to quit, then, then we want to break or come off from the program to stop the program. And then we're going to have the fee statement. And from the fee statement, we're just going to do a simple echo statement. And we just want to echo the lines. And then let us finish with the done statement. Let's put one more line. So we're going to say echo reader exiting. So let's go ahead and save our file with escape colon WQ to save and quit. And let's open up the write pipe file. So we're going to say VI write pipe dot SH. We're going to do the same thing in the write pipe file. We're going to put in the shebang. So we're going to say slash USR slash bin slash env space bash. Let's write all of the commands for the writer file. And the, the script for the writer files is a little bit shorter than the script for the reader file. We're going to create a variable called pipe as well. And we're going to create that variable in the temp folder. And we're going to call this pipe as well test pipe. So we're going to create a simple if statement. So we're going to say if the file does not exist and we're going to do dollar sign pipe, then if it doesn't exist, then we want to tell the user that the reader is not running. And then we want to exit the program. So we're going to say exit one and we're going to end off the if statement. However, if the reader file is running, then we're going to do some work. For here, we're going to say if dollar sign one and dollar sign one means the parameter close up the statement. Then we're going to say echo dollar sign one and put it or redirect it to the pipe variable. Else we want to echo hello. I'm 
coming from, I'm going to redirect it to the pipe variable. The dollar sign, dollar sign represent the process ID. We're going to end up the if statement with the fee statement. So let's go ahead and save WQ. If I run the write pipe.sh file first, we should get back an error saying that we need to run the read pipe.sh file first. So let's try it. Write pipe.sh and we got back the message reader not running. So let's run let's run the read pipe.sh file. So we're going to say read pipe.sh and we're going to use the and percent or the and symbol because we want the process or we want the file to run in the background. And we hit enter and we get our process ID. So our process ID is this number. Now let's go ahead and run the write pipe file and see what we get from there. So let's put write pipe dot sh. And if we take a look at the result, it said, hello, I'm coming from, and it gives the process it's coming from. So we're going to say write pipe dot sh and we use quit because remember in the program, if the user use quit, we created an echo statement that says reader exiting. So, so let's hit enter and we got back reader exiting and that's it for this tutorial about pipes so thank you for watching thank you for coming back if this video have helped you please like subscribe comment and the positive feedback actually keeps me going and making me want to do more video for you guys so please don't forget to like or subscribe to my channel and hopefully my channel will grow on youtube with the Linux community. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming back and I will see you in the next tutorial.